Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out another game from the 7 Day FPS Game Jam Challenge. This is Attack of the Oculoids by developer Lee Perry and is a first person shooter slash brawler that involves a wizard trying to do his or her best to stave off, you'll pardon the expression, uh, the Oculoids, which are these sort of little flying uh, creepy creatures that sort of remind me of the dudes from Eye of the Beholder. And we've got about six different weapons to choose from. We've got to figure out what the best combination of those weapons is to keep keep them off and each time you play the game you'll actually run into a slightly different configuration of what affects them sort of like the pills in Isaac or something if you can consider that I suppose uh, but I think the best way to go about it is just to show you what it's about and I'll try and do my best to stay alive here it's uh, probably going to be a fairly short episode if I could predict anything from the little bit of time I've spent with this game so far so we've got WASD on movement weapon cycle is going to be mouse wheel in my case and attack is mouse click enemies react differently to spells in every new match so here we go uh, we always default to our sword and let's just test that on the first dude we see oh that gives them a charm spell this one makes them gigantic the wooden board makes them turn into ice that could be good uh, oh this staff seems to be the thing that kills them instantly so we've got our staff laser and you can see uh, you can see in the top right corner each weapon has its own charges uh, that slowly deplete as we fight down these guys and uh, we don't get a chance to recharge this. This is like a one-shot deal. If you blow your chance, you're just not going to be able to keep going. So it's just about how many guys you can kill in one run. Uh, this one seems to be sick. I think I've made it sick through that. Uh, how about the fairy wand? That gives it magical wings this time. Uh, yeah, wings maybe? No, wow. Good dodges though, honestly. Yeah, totally wings there. And let's shoot it with this uh, hot pepper crystal. Wow, my aim is amazing. Okay, that makes them tiny. Sometimes you can use some of these weapons in conjunction with each other, I've noticed. Like, if they're tiny, they might be susceptible to other uh, effects more so. And I think thereby some little synergies might pop up every now and then. And I'm not sure if that's actually true or if it's just in my imagination. But it does feel like it's happened. So that was a terrible run I had there. Uh, sadly, you've perished final oculoid to tally was six. I think I can do better than that. Let's try another run. I want to mention, of course, this is a very interesting graphical style. It's one I've seen come up from time to time, and I think the really cool thing about it... Oh, just happened to do the same effect there twice in a row. That's funny. Uh, it sort of tricks the eye into believing almost like you're looking at uh, sprites that are all really smoothly animated, because this is sort of reminding me a little bit of, like, back in the day playing Duke Nukem 3D or something. It had a similar low-res aesthetic. I mean, obviously, they're going for that aesthetic on purpose in this case. Back then, it was just based on the hardware constraints at the time. Uh, but now that we have access to just about anything, I mean, you can even tell the models here are actually created uh, and, you know, very high fidelity, very nice looking, but you can only see them when you get really close up. Other than that, they're quite fractured in a, uh, a bit of a mosaic effect. And uh, I just think it does a kind of a neat thing with the highlights. As you can see far away, you'll just catch little bits and pieces of highlights off the edges of things, and uh, it's just enough fidelity and resolution that you get the impression that everything looks really nice. It's just kind of far away, so it's like, you know, a fancy-looking game back in 1992, or something like that. Just uh, with the added benefit of having everything be poly models instead of sprites. Hopefully that makes some sense for any of you out there that are trying to parse what it is that I'm trying to talk about here. Uh, made sense in my head anyway. Okay, we did terribly again that time. Let's see if the sword will also trigger them to become uh, charmed again for the third time. Can't get a good look at his eye there. Can, can he turn around for me? Oh, well, Axe seemed to make him small that time. Uh, I really do like these nice little details, too. I mean, it looks like the bricks might be individually modeled to some extent, or at least in certain places anyway. Uh, or are they, actually? It looked like there's a groove there, but it might just be bump mapping. I'm pretty sure it's actually just bump mapping now that I look at it again. Uh, but certain spots, of course, like there, the brick is individually modeled. On this edge, of course, it's individually modeled. You get the idea. Uh, and I think having this low-fidelity approach does... Whoa! I haven't seen that happen before. Uh, the low fidelity approach just helps you kind of not notice things like how grass, and, and this is the case even in AAA games these days still, uh, but the grass is just always made up of usually like a plane of similar grass sprites that are going in every direction. This case actually looks like it's maybe not that effect. I think they might actually be little little groups of points. I don't know, it's, it's, kind of, it's tough to tell actually with this effect going over top everything. You can jump, by the way, although I'm not sure to what a degree that'll really be helpful for you. I mean, there's not a lot of things you can do to get out of their way. 
They're kind of going to be chasing after you no matter where you go. And I'm not sure I've actually killed any of them. I've just been sort of running around talking and talking in circles, which uh, just kind of my nature, isn't it? Yeah. All right. We, we didn't really fight anything in that one. I also kind of like the ambience of this game in a funny way, and it's not so much to say that, like, I really love the fact that there's no sound effects or anything, uh, but I think the developer found a kind of a neat way to make that work uh, for the lack of time, or the time constraints, I should say, for a seven-day FPS game jam entry. Uh, since there aren't any sound effects, the fact that we've just got this music looping, it's sort of happy, uh, sort of nonchalant, silly music, and it just sort of makes this whole thing take a different tone, right? Because these oculoids are actually almost a little bit cute in a weird enough way, at least may that's maybe what I think, I don't know if you agree with me, uh, but the way that they approach some of these effects is very comical. The fact that they could fall in love with you or they can gain fairy wings, I mean, there's certainly an air of humor to this, and I think that approach goes well with this music, I think it kind of complements it all very well. And, oh, that weapon's depleted. I'd love to see this effect uh, kind of broadened a little bit. Uh, maybe even just see this whole game continue to, uh, to be in development. I'd love to see where they could take this. I'm imagining sort of like a first-person Binding of Isaac style thing, because actually, oddly enough, the way that these controls work almost does give me that feeling a little bit of like a Binding of Isaac uh, style thing, where we're fighting through rooms of enemies, and I could see there being procedurally generated labyrinths and such. Uh, and maybe each style of enemy changes what its effects are in each game, and then you'd get items that would have different effects that might be somewhat randomized each time. I mean, hopefully they could fall into a few categories so you'd at least have something to associate with them. Uh, for example, the fairy wand would maybe have comical effects most of the time, although there could be a group that they rotate through. Uh, the gem could be high damage effects. Uh, the branch could be, like, nature-y kind of effects. And maybe there could even be polarity things that happen with that as well. Uh, if you can imagine something like that. And I think there's actually a lot of potential for that idea. Uh, I would hope that maybe you guys could agree or disagree with me in the comments, so I'm kind of interested in hearing what you guys think about it. Honestly, I wasn't playing this game to be super competitive. I mostly just wanted to show off the premise and the graphical style, and I think it's kind of a neat con uh, conjunction of those two things going together. I have to say the title screen is maybe a little bit overly dramatic at times, but, you know... It's also got that kind of gothic nuance to it. There was, like, flying buttresses that we were walking around between, so, you know, maybe that is infused a little bit in there. Uh, but anyway, that is Attack of the Onculoids. If you guys would like to try this out, you can try it right in your browser. It is totally free to play, of course, and I'd be curious to hear what your high scores and opinions are on this one, of course. So let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like on it. As always, there will be more episodes of Mini Impressions that go up every single day. So if you're a fan of finding out about a new artistic, original, or generally uh, unique indie game every single day, consider subscribing to the channel. It does help me out a whole bunch, and I do try and stay on top of most of the big game jams that come through, whether that be the 7-day FPS channel, challenge, the proc jam stuff, the uh, ludum dare stuff, or however you want to pronounce it. I usually say LD, but you've heard that story from me a few times. Anyway, I will catch you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope you have a fantastic night.